Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. The channel is now sponsored by Trefoil.be, so if you need a game server, hit the link in the description to get 20% off. So our last episode, we finally did something we've been meaning to do for quite a long time and just gradually working towards, and we built up our rockets down here in the rocket silo, and we took off and we flew to the moon. And that was generally quite successful we we got we got to the moon that, that that went okay and while we're up there well i'll show you a bit of footage from the uh, from the stream to show, show you show you how things went while we were up there because it's going to be a bit of an effort to get there now in in, in the um in the, in the catch-up video to go to go and have another look at it and, and poke around so i'm just going to talk about it instead and, and as i say, show you some b-roll footage so yes we all flew off there in us in our rockets uh one person per rocket and went and that went well, we had we got there with uh, without any serious difficulties. Now, one thing that's not notable is that you do need an air supply when you're on the moon. So we each took out a um, a couple of cans of air with us to give us a decent amount of time available over there. I think in hindsight we should have taken quite a lot more. It's like taking food when you go uh, mining; you need to take quite a lot with you because you'll get through it all. Um, we we should have taken a bit more, but I, I got quite lucky and I managed to um, kill a, a space Enderman. Um, which might have had a different name, I don't remember. <laughs> but he, he had a, a, t a tank of air with him, which I was able to um, nick, and, and, and that gave me a little bit longer, which is just as well because I did end up using practically all of the air up before I uh, before I got back down to uh, back down to the, the back down to land. We've since been able to refill the uh, the, the air tanks, but I'll get onto that a bit later. So while we were up there, but the uh, the main thing we we wanted was to do some was to um, get the get a blueprint for a tier two rocket, which you need to do by killing one of the boss mobs. So it turns out you find one of those by finding a very suspiciously artificial looking hole in the moon. Um, it turns out there's, these, there's, there's, there really are aliens on the moon in this case, um, and then you drop down the hole, and then down the bottom of that there was a boss, which as far as I remember was some sort of large space skeleton essentially. So we all went in there, wailed on that for a while with our with our weapons, and it it actually it was as as boss monsters go, that one was uh, was a relatively easy fight. So we were able to kill that, and unfortunately we didn't get the um, the actual blueprint that we needed from him so we had two choices at this point we could either go off and find another one of the same same another of the same type of boss in another hole somewhere um, but the hole was quite difficult to find it took us a lot of exploring and uh, we got through and we were running quite low on air by this point so it turns out there's another way to get the uh, the blueprint that we needed and that is if you go and talk to, and go and trade with one of the, uh, the the space villagers on the on the moon um, I think I think the game just called them aliens um, then then they, they will t they will turn a, n a number of blue moon sapphires into and and um, and the exist and the, uh, the, the the blueprint for the moon buggy into the blueprint for the new, for the tier two rocket, which is what we actually needed. Fortunately, while we've been up there, we'd also all gone out on a number of mining expeditions. Just because you know you go to a you go to a new um, area and you want to go out and explore, find out what sort of what sort of resources you can get from there. Go around do a bit of digging digging things up and just generally see what you can find. So we dug out some long tunnels. We found some cheese because everybody knows the moon's made of cheese. We found uh, we did find a number of the blue saf moon sapphires, and we were able to so we were, were able to use those in exchange. And we found a few other sort of resources as well, which um, I think have all now been used up because we didn't get quite as much of them as we hoped. So I think another trip to the moon is going to be in order once we've got um, with a lot more air tanks this time, and maybe maybe some ender chests to send the stuff home. And well, we shall see. But um, whether we what we perhaps ideally need if we're going to be doing this here long term is have some sort of outpost on the moon with an oxygen generation facility in it so you can keep nipping back there and fill up your oxygen tanks as they start to get low and that if you combine that with an ender chest allowing us to send stuff to and from the ground or for, from the overworld then it might be possible to go out there for a bit longer do a lot more mining a lot more building of stuff and, and, and so on and just generally keep things ticking over much more nicely. I suppose the other possibility is to again use the ender chest and have somebody back on the in the overworld the um we're working putting the taking the canisters out putting them into the uh, oxygenator to refill them and then putting them back in the ender chest to send them back over to the to the moon base so that they can be reused by the astronauts up there that would work quite well um teleporting is a little bit cheaty but i don't think we i i think it, it is it is a mechanic in the game so i don't think there's anything wrong with using it the big downside of that plan is i'm not sure any of us trust each other enough to be providing a steady supply of oxygen um now i think the the, the better way would be to have an enormous amount of it available and then say hey could somebody go and refill refill them all or maybe even better you we could automate it I, mean, I don't see any reason why you couldn't have something pulling out of an ender chest feeding it automatically into the um, oxygenator and then putting them back and then putting them back into the end chest as well so having that automated might be quite a nice way to do it
we shall we shall have to see though we'll um we'll see how much more we, we we actually do and how much more we need to go to the moon so after we'd mined up a, a bit of cheese some sapphire and some naquadar the um the moon the moon min mineral that we uh apparently the other was the other big reason for going out there we then decided it was time to come home because as i said we were starting to run low on air so in in theory that's that's quite easy you you get into your rocket uh you well you you get you, you get your you extract your rocket from your landing pad uh, your landing pod rather and the uh, and the launch pad as well i think and and you need a fuel a fueling um device you rebuild the rocket basically again as you as you did on norvis not norvis uh, that's that's factorio as you did back on the on earth in the the overworld whatever we're, whatever we're calling the the start planet for um, for minecraft and then you just fly back in exactly the same way that you flew up there now that in theory is relatively straightforward however some mistakes were made um apparently uh, mike started his countdown for his rocket then st then got realized he had the launch platform that he needed to give to pete so he got out of his rocket to give it to pete and the rocket left without him so in order to get around that he ended up um, grappling onto the side of tristan's rocket with his hook and uh, trying to and trying to then sort of hang on to it as it flew all the way back from the moon and somehow that seemed to basically work he did die as when he got back to the back to uh, back to the main planet um, but i think that might have been i'm honestly not quite sure why why and how he died but he did um <laughs> somehow and but he, but he but he but he at least was back on the on the right planet so all so he didn't lose all of his stuff so yeah that was interesting and uh, spectacular so after we got back as i say we then went into the the uh, we have the um the oxygen machine in here somewhere which one is it i think it's yes this one up here uh, it's called an oxygen compressor that makes a lot of sense so the idea is you can put your your oxygen tanks into this chest here they get put in there in in the normal way um we've got then a, a vent oxygen collect event here that as you can see from the sort of the sparkly effect is pulling in oxygen out of the atmosphere pumping it into there so it, it collects it, it fills up the um fills up the uh, the canisters and then puts them back into the into the bottom chest down here and there's a couple in here um which so you can then grab those out you can put them in your spacesuit and they will keep you alive for a while so as i was saying the, i think the thing if we do need to get back to the moon <clears throat> the thing to do would be to have some sort of ender chest system here and use um f and you use filters on these servos so it only passes the empty tanks into the machine and then it, and then the uh, the full tanks get come out and get put back into it and so there should in theory then there will always be a supply a supply of at least some oxygen tanks available for you wherever you are you can just grab them and and then when you put the empty ones in here they'll go around and they'll come back and, and so on so you've just got a, a steady supply of oxygen available no matter where you are one of the big advantages of doing it that way, I think, oh, you'd have to leave this chunk loaded, but that, I, I imagine, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It may well already be. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Or if not, we could move it to another one, which is. So the the um, the big advantage of that is it means everybody can go off on the expedition, which means you've got a bit more manpower for fighting mobs or for exploring and doing the mining. And the other big advantage is that it means you've only got one surface that's sort of fully loaded in and, and being played, because we have discovered that our server struggles quite a lot. If you have, well, it's struggling quite a lot just all the time because it's not when, when when we're all in it because it's not really spec for this sort of shenaniganry um but it's even worse if you've got multiple people people on multiple different dimensions at the same time because then the servers happen to work a lot harder it's got much bigger areas to um to to, to deal with and so that i suppose is where we should be t t taking advantage of the services of um our, our new sponsor trefoil.be because they have a range of various factorio and minecraft and some other games as well servers that you can so you, you can you can buy some time on those and and um and and they will then just have you've then got much more grunt behind your server and it will then hopefully run the game much better i don't know i don't think we're planning to play um uh what we're playing minecraft for all that much longer though so we haven't bothered to move over to the, to the server over to there um but but however we are moving the factorio server over so we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes on um, or we will have by the time you see this video we will have seen how well that works and i'm sure it'll be i'm sure it'll be great and we'll have much better ping times and a and generally a more responsive game so after we came back, I have to admit, I then sort of twiddled my thumbs a little bit. I was trying to decide what to do. I mean, I had a, had a look through the quest systems. There's um, a little bit left in Black Magic, although I've done most of it. Perhaps I should have gone in for these augmented capacity runes down here and made, got, got those built up. Um, especially after asking Pete last week to, to help me with uh, with growing the, uh, the dark gems down there, of which I've not used very many yet. But still, it's... Um, uh, there, there, there are a few things left to use in, in, in that sort of area. Al was working on trying to make the heavy duty plates in a more automatic way. Um, I think he made some progress, but he said he sort of eventually gave up because it was a bit too. Um, it just, it, it was, it was a difficult recipe and to, to automate. And I'm sure I'll tell you a lot more about that in his video. So I recommend checking that one out to. Um, to find out exactly what he was trying to do. And there'll be more, a lot more information on that, of course. In, sorry, there'll be a link to that at the end of this video. 
There's been some extra shenaniganry going on over here, trying to link up the um, the food storage system to the to the network. I'm not sure exactly what Al was trying to do to be clever with it, but um, let's see what, what, what we've got in here. Okay, so we've got all of the normal stuff that you expect to see, but if I search for burgers, I don't know, we have one. But yeah, so the, the food there's obviously a burger somewhere in the uh, computer system for some reason, but all of the food that's stored here is not can, is not hooked up because that'd be a bit crazy. At least I don't think it is. Let's let's have a look for cucumbers. Oh no, okay, so I take that back. This one, ha this chest has been hooked up to the, uh, the system, which is why there's a, a storage bus attached to the top of it there. But oh, and, and probably the bottom one as well. But a, but some of the other ones, like the one over here that contains all of the the sort of finished food, um, has not been yet. Has not been, and I don't know whether that's a not yet or or it's it's not going to happen. I guess we'll find out in in a, in a future stream. So that got that 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 brings us on to now onto Tristan, who um, was also he was, he was running around being uh, being productive as, as as usual. So he's now got started on the tier five quest line. So there was let's see, there was the yes, you go to the. So yeah, you go to the moon. It's, that, that's the opening quest for the uh, for this line. So we did that at the beginning of the episode, and then you get some moon turf and some new ore and meteor. Oh, meteoric iron. That was another thing we found. And lunar sapphires, and you kill a skeleton. You kill a um, a moon skeleton. That's that that guy. That was the boss I was talking about. Um, oops. And then you get that's the tier two schematic I was talking about. You can then and then so you basically just carry on working through the through the quest lines. And he's so he's been doing doing a bit of that. Um, we can make a moon buggy apparently. That might be um, sounds sounds like good fun. Um. I guess we try, oh, primary means of trans, tra the yeah. So basically, you get a little car to drive around. Awesome. So yeah, sounds like sounds like fun. We'll we'll try and make one of those at some point in the future and uh, have a have a play with it. How, what, how much is it cost? Oh, it's enormous quantities of heavy duty plate, buggy wheels which are very cheap and easy, um, and a buggy seat which is easy-ish. <laughs> Okay, well that's that looks that looks reasonably manageable. So that yeah, that's something to come. So come along. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'll be in the next stream, but uh, do come to. They'll be they'll be playing again on on Thursday, and if I'm not playing, then you'll be able to watch um, Al's stream instead. So um, check his out if you if if I'm not available, and. Um, Otherwise, there's going to be all the other streams on the on the channel, of course. On Mondays, we have Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2, where I don't know if we're actually going to be launching a rocket this time, but uh, just yet, because it's still quite, there's still um, a fair amount of stuff left to do. But it would be quite entertaining if we launched a rocket in all three of my um, my, my games in in the same week. Then there'll be Dyson Sphere program on uh, Wednesday, where I've have recently gone to space and will now be trying to work on more science and titanium so again that's another one where i've been going off into space and thursdays will as i say be, be a good a good day for minecraft and the weekend we'll have lots and lots of videos coming out so thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed all of that and we'll see you see you and all the rest of the content see you there